When it came a day for Moshe to pass away from this earth, God came to him and said, Your day has come. So Moshe says, Master of the universe, after all the effort I put in, you're telling me that my days are up? I don't want to die. I want to live and tell of the greatness of God. So God says, you can't. I have decreed that all, that all people must die. So Moshe says, Master of the universe, I ask you for one thing before I die, and that is I want to go up to the heavens, break open all the gates of all the heavens and all the gates of the, of the depths of the earth so that all will see that there is no one besides you. So God says to him, you say there is no one besides me, I say there is no one like you. As it says, and there will never be another prophet like Moshe. Hein korva yamecha lamus, Omer Reb Evu. Reb Evu taught that Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, I praised you to the 600,000 people who sanctify your name by, by telling them that you reward people for every good deed. And that which I praised you with you are now going to punish me and tell me that my days are up. Is this measure for measure? Is this what I deserve? You're telling me I have to die while I devoted my life to you? You're telling me that I can't complete the journey, but I completed my job? You're telling me that you don't have enough when I gave you everything I had. So God says to Moshe, this too is good. Because when I said to you, Hain karvu yonecha, your day has come, Hain is related to the word hine. Hine anechi shaleach malach. Hain tzadik ba'aret yeshulam. And hine anechi shaleach l'chem eselio anavi. And that is that the, the death of a tzadik your dying is also for the good. I'll see you later. And just as you praised me to the 600,000 souls, I will praise you and raise you in the future. In other words, after Mashiach comes, among all of the tzaddikim. In fact, he will be elevated fifty-five thousand righteous people will, will you will be raised among above the fifty-five thousand righteous. And that's Hain. Hain is fifty-five. The Torah mentions Moshe's death ten times. Because that's how many times God had to decree his death before it actually happened. And each time, Moshe prayed that he would go into Israel and didn't take the decree seriously. Because Moshe thought to himself, the Jews sinned many times, grievous sins, and every time I asked God to forgive them, he, I prevailed and God forgave them. So certainly I, who have never sinned, certainly when I ask of God to let me go into Israel, he'll let me go. When God saw that Moshe was not taking the decree seriously and he's not preparing himself in prayer, he immediately swore that by his holy name that Moshe would not go into Israel. When Moshe saw that the decree had been sealed, then he proclaimed the fast and he drew a circle in the sand and he stood in the circle and he said, I won't budge from here until you nullify that decree. Moshe took at that time sackcloth and covered himself with ash and began to plead with God. And his prayers were so intense that the heavens and earth shook. And all of creation thought 
that, uh, that it was all over. And a heavenly voice called out and said, no, no, the world is not over. That's just Moshe's prayer uh, shaking the foundations. As, uh, as it says in the, in the vision of Yecheskel, that was the sound of Moshe praying. God proclaimed, declared, in every heaven that all the gates of each heaven and all the courts of each heaven should be sealed and closed and not to accept Moshe's prayer because the decree had already been sealed. The angel who is in charge of announcements, his name is Ahazriel, was called before God in haste and he was told to go down to every gate and lock it because the, the sound, the, the voice of Moshe's prayers were cutting through like a sword. And then the angels in heaven praised God and said, Baruch Kved Hashem in Kaimai, because they saw that God pay, plays no favorites. That even Moshe, when the decree is made, it sticks. At that time, Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, it is known and revealed to you how much I worked and how much I suffered, how much I agonized over the Jewish people until I made them believers in you. How much I suffered and how much I agonized over them until I implanted in them a devotion to mitzvahs. And I assumed that just as I see them in their starting points, when they're not yet worthy, I will certainly see them also when they are worthy. And now that they are worthy, you're telling me that I can't go with them? Aren't you contradicting the Torah? Because in the Torah it says that if you hire someone to do a job, you have to pay him the day that he does the job and not wait until tomorrow. So you're telling me that today, meaning in this world, you're not paying me. You'll pay me later. But you're not allowed to do that. You have to pay me now. So God says, you're asking me to contradict my Torah. Because in my Torah it says, all men will, will die at 120. Right after the flood, it says, The angel of death, who is the, the head of all the Satans, all the little Satonim, was counting the moments until he could take Moshe's neshama. Not that he was wicked, but that he, uh, it was a great honor for him. At that time, an hour had gone by from the time that Moshe was supposed to die. He had delayed it for an hour. Then, at the end of the hour, Moshe said to God, Master of the universe, if you won't let me go into Israel, at least let me stay in this world outside of Israel. So Moshe says, if you don't die in this world, how will I resurrect you in the world to come? The Baal Shem Tov was given the, the, the choice of either going to heaven with his body or having his body go back to dust and being resurrected. And the Baal Shem Tov chose resurrection. Better to go back to the, to the earth to be buried and resurrected than to never die. I don't know why, but there's some virtue to it. So God says to Moshe, if you don't die, how, am I, how will I be able to resurrect you? And not only that, you're, you're asking me to contradict my Torah. So Moshe says, Master of the universe, if I can't go into Israel, can you at least let me live like an animal that eats grass and drinks water, but gets a chance to see the world? Let me be like one of them. And God said, enough already. So Moshe said, Master of the universe, if I can't be like an animal in this world, can I be like a bird who flies to the four corners of the earth during the day and gathers its food, and then in the evening it returns to its nest? So Moshe wanted to be in heaven part of the time, but part of the time to be able to come f visit the earth, which just shows how precious this world is to, to the righteous. So God said, enough already. 
What does enough already mean? Enough talk. When Moshe saw that nothing is going to save him and that he has to die, then he said, Hatsur Tomim Po'olei Kichol Drachav Mishpa Kele Muna Ve'ein Ovel Tzadik V'yashar Hu. God is just in all that he does. Moshe then took a scroll and began to write God's name and the song of Moshe, Hazinu. Uh, he hadn't yet finished writing when the moment of his death arrived. God said to the angel Gavriel, bring me the neshama, bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel says to God, master of the universe, he who is equal to 600,000 other people, how can I see him die? How can I do him harm? So God says to the angel Michal, go bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel Michal says, master of the universe, I was his teacher. He was my student. I can't bear to see him die. So God says to the angel of death, go bring me Moshe's neshama. The angel of death wrapped himself in anger, strapped on his sword, clothed himself in cruelty, and went towards Moshe. When he saw Moshe sitting and writing God's name, shining like, uh, like the sun, he said, uh, the angel of death was frightened, and he said, certainly no angel can approach him. And before the angel revealed himself to Moshe, Moshe already knew that he was there, and he said to him, Ein sholim Omar Hashem l'rishoyim. No peace to you. What are you doing here? He said, I came to take your neshama. So Moshe said, who sent you? <laughs> who sent you? He said, he who created all creatures sent me. So Moshe says, you are not taking my soul. So the angel said, but all souls are in my hands. So Moshe said, all souls may be, but not me. So the angel of death says, and what's so special about you? So Moshe says, Ani ben Amram. I am the son of Amram. I was born circumcised. The day I was born, I spoke and I walked and I conversed with my mother and father. And I prophesied that I will receive the Torah in a flame of fire. And then when I went out to the streets, I walked into the palace of the king and I took the crown off his head. And when I was 80 years old, I performed the uh, wonders and the miracles in Egypt. And I took 600,000 people out from under the noses of the Egyptians. And then I split the sea into 12 parts. I turned the bitter waters to sweet. I went up. I made my way through heaven and fought a battle with the angels and received the Torah from God's right hand and spoke to God face to face and revealed to people the secrets of heaven. Then I, carry, I waged war with Sichon and Oig, the giants, who even in the times of the flood, the waters only reached their knee. And I stopped the moon and the sun in their orbits. And I killed the, the giants with the stick in my hand. Mi yesh beboi oilam sheyocholasis came. Who else in this world can do that? All that. Lech rasha mikan. Get away from me. The angel of death fled. And he came back to God, and God said to him, angrily, go bring me Moshe's neshama. So the angel of death drew his sword, and he stood over Moshe with grim anger, or grim evil, whatever. What did Moshe do? Moshe took the stick that had God's name engraved on it. And he beat the angel of death until the angel of death fled. 
At the end of that moment, a heavenly voice called out and said, Moshe, your time has come. So Moshe says to God, Master of the universe, you remember that day you revealed yourself to me at the burning bush? And you said to me, come, let me send you down to Pharaoh, and you will take my children out of Egypt. You remember the day I stood at Mount Sinai? Forty days and forty nights, I beg of you, don't send me this angel of death. A heavenly voice called out and said, don't worry, fear not, I will take care of you myself. Moshe then began to prepare himself, to sanctify himself like the seraphim. And the angels and God came down from the heavens of heavens to take Moshe's neshama. The angels were Michoel, Gavriel, and Zagzagel. Michoel spread out the mattress. Gavriel put a pillow under Moshe's head. And Zagzagel put a pillow under Moshe's feet. Michoel stood to the right side, Gavriel to the left side. And God said to Moshe, close your eyes. And he closed his eyes. Fold your arms across your chest, and he folded his arms across his chest, straightened out your feet, and he straightened out his feet, his legs. And then God called to the neshama within Moshe's goof, within Moshe's body. And he said, Biti, my daughter, 120 years was set aside for you to be in Moshe's body. The, the 120 years are up. It is time for you to come out. Come out and don't delay. So the Neshama said, Master of the universe, I know that you are the God of all souls, and all Neshamas are in your hands. Life and death are in your hands. You created me, you formed me, and you placed me in Moshe's body for 120 years. But now, is there a holier place in all the world than Moshe's body. I love him. I don't want to go out. So God says, Neshama Tzi'i, come on out. Do not delay. I will raise you up to the heaven of heavens. I will seat you next to my throne among the Kruvim and the Srafim and the Gedudim, among the highest angels. So the Neshama says to God, Master of the universe, from the heaven of heavens and angels, some angels came down to earth, and they were immediately corrupted until you had to suspend them between heaven and earth. But this son of Amram, in 120 years, has never been corrupted. I beg of you, let me stay here. At that moment, God kissed Moshe and took his neshama through the kiss. <clears throat> God was crying and he said, who will argue with me in defense of the sinful? Who will stand up against me in defense of, of those who are wicked? The spirit of prophecy cried and said, there will be no more prophecy like the prophecy of Moshe. The heavens cried and said, the chosid is gone from the earth. And the earth cried and said, the righteous among people is no more. And when Yoshua came to find his teacher and couldn't find him, he cried and he said, Hashem, help us, God, Kigomar Chosid. Help us because the Chosid is gone. Kipasu Emunibne Adam, the the believer, the faithful among men is gone. U Malachi Hashoris Amrim, the angels of heaven say, Tzitkas Hashem Osa, he performed God's righteousness, and the Jews said, U Mishpatovim Yisrael. He judged the people, Elu ve'elu hayu emirim, and all of them together said, may he come in peace and may he rest in peace. May the memory of the tzaddik be a blessing and his soul live 
Лахай Эйлам Габа. Now, if you reconsider the whole thing, the questions you had before are not so relevant. The Medrash is not saying that there was actually a conversation between Adam and Moshe, and he said, I'm greater than you, and he said, I'm greater than you. The Medrash is trying to describe the difference between Adam and Moshe. If they would have this conversation, this is what it would sound like. In what way is Avraham great? In what way is Moshe greater? But not that they were debating their, their greatness. And even in the conversation between Moshe and God, in, in dying, not dying, all of this doesn't have to be verbalized. This is the reality. When it comes time for a tzaddik to die, everything in, in, in creation, everything in, in the universe is shaken. So God said to the angel, Michal, go bring me his neshama. And Michal said, nah, I, I can't stand to see it. What, what is this? Uh, an angel giving God a hard time? It's not that God told him to do it and the angel refused. It's that had God asked Michal to do it, he couldn't have done it because he's his teacher. Had God asked Gavriel to do it, he couldn't have done it because... So it just shows how, first of all, the soul of a tzaddik is not anxious to go to heaven, wants to stay on earth, because on earth is where God is really available, more so than in heaven. And it also shows how hard it is on the universe for a tzaddik to pass away. The heavens, the earth, the angels, everything is, is, is in trauma when, it, when a tzaddik is leaving, departing the earth. But the Medrash puts it in a way that your, that your heart can feel for it, not just in an abstract theological language. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted, just enjoying our Jewishness and our Torah and uh, the wisdom of the Torah and so on. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.